Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. I am uh, Dr. Vital Savir Baruch. I'm a nuclear medicine physician, and I have Dr. Carolyn Ball with me. She's a general cardiologist, and today we're going to present two scenarios of patients that are being evaluated for cardiac amyloidosis. Dr. Ball. Thanks. So our first patient is a 79-year-old gentleman with a complicated past medical history. He has long-standing hypertension and end-stage renal disease complicated by two renal transplants. He was transferred to our center for evaluation of severe low flow, low gradient aortic stenosis. Our first step in evaluation was to obtain a transthoracic echocardiogram, which confirms the presence of low flow, low gradient aortic stenosis, but also showed severe concentric left ventricular hypertrophy with grade three diastolic dysfunction. We began a workup for cardiac amyloidosis based on findings on his transthoracic echo. We started with a laboratory evaluation, including free light chains, serum and urine protein electrophoresis with immunofixation. All of this blood work came back within normal limits. So when a patient presented with negative trace of uh, light chains within their blood or their urine, now we're excluding the suspicious of AL amyloidosis. And the patient was sent to the nuclear medicine division for evaluation of ATTR amyloidosis within the heart. As you can see on the slides, uh, we use PYP bone scan to, to see if there is any increased uptake within the myocardium. An accumulation of the PYP radio tracer within the heart will indicate the presence of ATTR amyloidosis. However, in this case, we could definitely see that there is normal uptake within the bones and no uptake within the cardiac muscles. And therefore, the diagnosis of ATTR amyloidosis has been excluded. And patient was sent back to our colleagues, the cardiologist, for further evaluation. And now we have to find other reasons for the severe concentric left ventricular hypertrophy. So in our second scenario, as you guys are going to hear, uh, we have almost the same presentation, a little bit different results, and let's start. So our next patient is a 77-year-old woman who comes to cardiology clinic with six to nine months of progressive fatigue and lower extremity swelling. Her history is notable for bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome, which was treated about 10 years earlier. The bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome the setting with heart failure symptoms raised suspicion for cardiac amyloidosis. The patient was referred for similar serology, free light chains, serum and urine protein electrophoresis with immunofixation, which also returned within normal limits. So we referred her to our friends in nuclear medicine. As you can see in this slide, now when the patient injected with radio tracer PYP bone scan, you can actually see that there is a significant increased uptake within the myocardium. And the ratio of uptake between the heart to the bones is significantly higher than the first case. And that's defined as grade three uptake. Also, we can quantify that by putting region of interest above the cardiac muscles and to calculate the amount of counts within that region and to calculate the ratio of the uptake within the same region of interest now placed in the contralateral side of the chest to look at the counts within the bones. And here we can see that the uptake ratio is above 1.5%. And we can actually use the PYP bone scan to confirm the diagnosis of ATTR cardiac amyloidosis. And we don't need to perform biopsy. So back in cardiology clinic, we discussed the implications of transthyretin cardiac amyloidosis, and the patient will be sent for genetic testing to help us distinguish between wild type and mutant transthyretin amyloid. And that concludes our session, and thank you very much for joining us. I am Dr. Vital Savir Brook, a nuclear medicine physician, and I have with me. And I'm Dr. Caroline Ball, a general cardiologist. Thank you very much. Have a great day.